1986 Cadillac Fleetwood Broham de Elegance. Doing a video today on uh, how to remove these opera lights to see if I can maybe find a way to trace these down, chase down some wires, see what's going on with them, see if I can get them back into working order, or to find another way around to be able to get these back going again. Haven't seen any videos on YouTube dealing with these opera lights, so here I go. I'm going to attempt it. Stay tuned. Okay, so I, I, I attempted to take this little chrome panel off on this side. Started off, see where it took led me. All it was four screws, itty bitty screws, but it really led me to nowhere. They're just uh mounted onto the frame right here to the body of the car and uh, the top. That's all it led me, it didn't lead me to where I'd be able to get to these opera lights. So I'm gonna go ahead and I was looking at it and I believe. That somewhere somehow I'm gonna be able to try to remove this to be able to see if I can get behind here to be able to get to the actual opera light which is located right here which would be directly right behind this wall this panel so I'm gonna attempt these Looks like it's one screw on this side. Another screw on this bottom. I'm not sure if I had to take this one off or not. But I'm going to take you along as I go. So on the driver's side door, you have one screw up here. Another screw right here, and another right here. And as I move it around, I believe I have, feels like I've gotten all of them. Look up, rubber grommet right here. Looks like it's stapled in there. This isn't kind of easy. Let's go back door. See what we have. So after realizing that I didn't push the seat all the way forward, I think I should have done that a long time ago. Saved me. Well, actually, gave me a lot more room. A lot more leg room at that. <laughs> but yeah, push the seat all the way forward. It gives you a ton of space to get right here. So... Well, that seemed fairly easy. Just popped off. Like I said, it was uh, two screws back here on the on the back. This one, this one. And I went ahead and actually took this one off. Also, I didn't need to, but you know, didn't hurt. So. If we look behind here, there's actually it's like a little clip, which we can probably remove that way we can get it out of here. There we go. Just pull on it. It's like a little hook. This hook right there looks to this panel. 
this little rubber grommet piece. Two hooks, one on top, one on the bottom, connecting the two. Uh, and you can just. Sorry for that. Just like that. And you can just move that out the way. Yeah, I'm doing it this. I'm doing this at night in my garage. So, seatbelt still works. So, I see a lot of wires down here. Let's see if we can get to the bottom of this uh, opera lighting. Let me see. Let's see if there's a way we can possibly. Hmm. To be able to move this out the way. Everything. That way I won't have to tear off anything or well there's a screw behind here. I think we can remove that for the time being to be able to get this out the way, which it's really not in the way. But it might help. You see how there's a totally opening here and here. Right where this seat belt holder is, and it won't hurt to undo this seat belt, and we can just be able to drop it, drop it down, and get it all out the way. That way, we won't have to tear into this. You know, I like to, I like to keep things kind of the way they are. <laughs> I don't like to try to tear up anything, you know. I try to take my time with it. But let me get the correct tools and I'll be back. Okay, so actually I didn't have to, you don't actually have to remove the seat belt up, up top. As long as you take that which is this clip here. One screw. Just take that off. And this wire actually, actually I've already pulled it out. It's a 110. It's what's going into the actual opera light. Two brown wires up top, a blue and a white the bottom of it and that's that's a 7 16th it's one right there and then one right there I suggest that you put some type of tape or maybe some uh some adhesive at the end of the socket once you go to take these off that way you won't you won't lose them because if uh, they fall, well, I don't know if they'll be gone forever, but you might have a hard time trying to get them out of there. <laughs> so just to be on the safe side, you know, put a little adhesive or a oh, piece of tape or something. That way, you know, once you take it off, it'll stay on the socket and not fall out. Or just put your hand right here and undo it. That way, in case it does fall, you'll be able to catch it if you're lucky. Or got quick hands enough. <laughs> but uh, at this point, I got my tester out. And I try to test it, but I'm not getting any current to it. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, take the screws off to be able to pull it off the actual opera light off 
it should be able to pop out. And I'll unplug it. And then maybe do another test run on that plug itself. Let's see if I'm getting current out of it or not. I've read on uh, these forums online that there's actual inverters. These lights, where these lights run to. And I've read a couple where it says it runs to the back of the to the back of the uh, well, on the left hand side in the truck on the left hand side towards the back of the trunk I haven't yet looked for it I've tried to trace these wires down and uh, well they seem kind of like they'll be running towards the back don't want to tear everything up I'm trying to find it but I do believe they run towards the back so I'm going to remove the actual upper light and then uh, test it and then maybe next step is uh, trace these wires down okay so I was able to take off these screws Top one, the bottom one with the connector, kick connector right there. Yeah, here they are. Nice, top one. So, and once you take those off, you just have to push on the actual little stud there. And. Let's see what we got. Let's see, it has some of this, was it like two sided tape or? So, what I'll do at this point is disconnect it. So these uh, upper lights basically are what I've read, you know, and that's what I'm seeing now. My uh, driver's side, my left-hand side one, the actual plastic cover uh, was broke off, I believe. As you can see right here, where the plastic used to be. And I'm noticing right here, two wire connect, like two wires. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. Might be too bright. That's what they call these EL tape. That they used to do, use back in the, you know, when they came out with these cars. So I've seen a lot of people say on on the forum that they were able to find some off of eBay or so, or I guess they do do their own. I'm not sure yet. Haven't had any anybody do a video or. Uh, post pictures, you know, 
after the work that they said that they converted these or actually just ran new tape that they've ordered and they ordered they said that it said it ordered to with the inverter which i believe that's in the trunk somewhere which i haven't you know got to that point yet at this point this is my little work to be able to get these off just off of what i've read haven't seen a video so hopefully this video helps somebody i'm gonna test this with my tester see if i get any power and then i'll trace these wires see if i can find the inverter in the trunk like they say there is okay so i've tested it for power and uh I only got current out of the two brown ones. These top two. The left hand side, I guess it'd be the negative, and the right being positive somehow. Because when I did it backwards, when I tested them being ground and positive, was said positive, uh, almost like 12 voltages. And when I flipped it, it said negative, so. But I'm trying to, I didn't get no reading out of the blue or white wire, white wire. Sorry. So, I'm in the trunk of the car. And like I've read on the forums online, it says the inverter that those wires run to is a, it's located on the left hand side of the trunk. So I removed, you know, the cardboard or the carpet on the other side. Just, just pull it out, out your way. And I was looking for those wires and luckily this car has been messed with. And uh, here goes uh, the bundle of wires, 110 volt with the caution tape. V 110 VAC as you can see it's the the brown wires and the white and blue wires there's also another another set of blue and white wires but it's not the same ones there's another two wires that came out of somewhere and they bundled them up together somehow as you can see they ran through the back and down the side of the car and through there sorry if the camera's moving too much I'm trying to do this with one hand and if I'm not mistaken this screen box right here this is the inverter uh, let's see if I can get some uh, needle nose to take that out and not break it or just yank it out so let's squeeze on it and pops right out so So we got a black and a brown. So this is the inverter, the infamous inverter.
I'm gonna test this. See if I got the same current running through this inverter here or to see what's going on. Okay, so at this point <clears throat> I've uh try to test this all kinds of ways and I'm not sure if if it's the inverter itself or maybe the the actual Upper light itself, it's maybe gone bad. I want to say it's maybe the actual upper light, being that mine is a uh, doesn't have the casing. I don't know if you can tell the difference or can see it. Not an angle. See how my right hand side still has a glass, not glass, plastic casing over it. And all these things about Cadillac, they actually pretty smart and neat that they actually put an R on the right hand side. And then on the left hand side would be the L. My other Cadillac, the, I actually got an 87 Cadillac Fleetwood Broham also, which has both of them. Just this one doesn't have the casing on it. Maybe that's the reason. Maybe blew out or gone out. I'm not too sure. Kind of hard to tell at this point. Uh, but so far, for right now, I'm at a standstill. Uh, trace the wires back to the trunk on the left hand side. It is true. You got the inverter right there, small green box. And, uh, like I said, uh, to remove this, uh, upper light itself, all you have to do is, uh, you know, two, two screws and then the wire connector right there. Give yourself enough playroom, scoot your seat all the way forward if you can. And, uh, take that pillar off, just a couple screws, wiggle it around, pop it off. You know, and then this plastic. Let's connect it to the seat belt. Just take it off. It's, it was mounted off right there. Just undo it. Falls down. It doesn't go anywhere. You should be able to right through there. You know, one screw hole, another one. So a seven sixteenth socket. And uh, well, this is my video so far. How to remove it and uh, trace it back down to the. The wiring with the to the inverter uh, I'm gonna see if I can uh, maybe order some new ones if I get lucky from somewhere somehow if I find somewhere I'll, I'll add the link or if I go a different route maybe some LED strip lights or to go back with the EL tape maybe order off of eBay or so or wherever I can find it to redo it and uh I make sure however I do it, you know, whichever way I decide to go, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a video also for it. That way, you know, maybe it'll help somebody, you know, because I know I haven't seen a video yet so far. So, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the type of person to, to, you know, do something and, you know, keep it to myself, especially if I know something, you know, kind of hard to do or not, not necessarily to say it's hard, but. It's not much information out there on these vehicles, so I like to share my stuff, you know, just pass on the knowledge, you know, as it was passed on to me or as I learned. So thanks for watching again. It's a 1986 Cadillac Fleetwood Broham de Elegance. And uh, this is the removing opera lights, you know, being able to get to it and uh, tracing it down to the inverter. Thanks for watching.